It's Thursday, March 14th, and you're listening to the Geek at Geek News Central, the longest continuous running tech podcast. This is show number 843, sponsored in part by GoDaddy.com, a March GoDaddy special. Get GoDaddy hosting for a dollar per month for a whole year. Use promo code HOSTDEAL2. Geek News Central is, all sponsor, is also sponsored in part by DYN. That's Dine.com. Save 30% at Dine.com. Use promo code PODCAST30. Hey, folks, got a great show lined up for you tonight. I tell you, <laughs> uh, I got a little ranting to do. I think you guys will know what the topic is about if you've been watching the Geek News Central website. But I uh, got a lot to talk about, lots of tech to share with you. And, uh, man, it's just been absolutely insanely crazy busy here. Anyway, strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go no go for the Geek News Central podcast. Digital archive recorders. We're go fly. Microphone. We're go fly. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go fly. Interflux totism suppressor. All right, I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Button, button, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to Geek News Central coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central studio overlooking Greater Honolulu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. Of course, my name is Todd Cochran and I want to give a warm welcome to all of the Ohana, all of the longtime listeners and viewers of the show. Thanks for being here. Those of you that are on the stream tonight, Jiggy Jaguar, uh, Jetstream 2K, welcome to uh, the show I see here in the chat room. So it's a uh, getting on time start here tonight. Uh, for the show, which is, is fantastic. And I feel like I have been like, you guys ever go swimming? <laughs> and just get in the middle of the deep end of the pool and, and tread water and tread water for a while. And then all of a sudden you're kind of like, I'm tired of treading water and I need to, I need to swim. And uh, it's been that way all week. <laughs> when we, uh, when I did the show uh, Monday night, I was really, I mean, just completely jazzed. I'm still, this is the way this whole week's been. And uh, it's been one of those, I guess for a better word, it's been one of those weeks where one thing has led to another. <laughs> and I have not had, I mean, not a single uh, down night, um, midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, uh, waking up at 5 a.m., it's been, I mean, it's been crazy. And uh, while I can't go into the details, it's all good. Don't get me wrong. It's all good. But it's it's been a, a pretty crazy week here. But, hey, if you're new to the show, thanks for being here. And uh, we, we're going to have a great tech show for you tonight. Uh, going to take just a few minutes here and, of course, make sure that you know where to find the show if you decide you want to stay subscribed to this crazy thing. All you got to do is go over to, and see if I push the right button here, Go over to geeknewscentral.com and uh, just basically follow the website, second column there. There's a way for you to subscribe to uh, Geek News Central audio or video programming, our special media events, feed, Saturday morning tech, the gadget professor, robot underpants, and coming back to Geek News Central for regular produced shows on April 1st, the Chrome Show. So we look forward to having uh, all the shows completely booked and, and rocking and rolling. And uh, so it's a pretty exciting time here at Geek News Central from that standpoint. Also, you can get signed up for the newsletter. There's a link to the newsletter on top of the website. Make sure you uh, get hooked up with that so that you uh, can get the email uh, from every single show. And, you know, <laughs> I got a couple of emails yesterday saying, dude, uh, never got the newsletter. And I was like, hmm, yeah, I didn't send it out. <laughs> So my bus, I mean, I was so overwhelmed uh, Monday night. I got the show up. As a matter of fact, I made a mistake in publishing the audio into the video feed. Um, I was just rushing to get everything done and uh, so missed that step. Things are a little calmer tonight, so that uh, should not happen. Hey, you can also watch the show on the Tech Podcast channel on the Roku, Boxy, Samsung, Smart TV, Google TV. Make sure you get over to geeknewcentral.com. Check out all the great content over there. Lots of great tech shows. Every possible genre in the tech space is there. 100 plus shows. As a matter of fact, we've had a whole bunch of new applications that we've been going through. 
be introducing some new shows to the network over the next uh, few days. Um, basically, we're up today on the live audio stream. We're on uh, Ustream. We're on uh, live stream. We're on the Amazon non-commercial stream. So there's nothing really to prevent someone from watching the show tonight. Uh, bandwidth is holding tight, which is fantastic, which is good. And, uh, of course, that all would not be possible without our good friends over at GoDaddy.com. GoDaddy's got some great specials for you this month. And, really, it's easy to find all of our offers because all you got to do is go over to GeekNewCentral.com forward slash GoDaddy to find all of our different promo codes. And uh, when you're on that website, there's information there on, uh, really, there's savings for everybody. That 295.com, they're limit one right now versus three, the dollar month hosting for 12 months using the promo code HOSTDEAL2, 35% off your total new order at GoDaddy by using Go35Off2. That's a fantastic code. And then everyday non-expiring offers, which we have up on the website. Um, and if you ever find one of those codes that is not working or it doesn't appear that you got the savings, uh, let me know. GoDaddy's been running a huge number of sales, and I was actually – had gotten a couple of emails and I went back to the folks at GoDaddy. I said, listen, you know, they're putting the, the codes in and um, they said, oh yeah, we can see the codes, but they're getting more off because they got a better deal. You still got credit. So that's the main thing. But uh, let me know if you're having problems and you don't have a code or maybe a code doesn't work and give you the discount you're supposed to. Keep me advised on that. But we want to thank GoDaddy for being really um, the premier sponsor here at Geek News Central. And uh, we've got all those great offers. Again, get 12 months of economy hosting for just a dollar a month. We've got 35% off on new orders. And, of course, the special offer that just for $2.95, get a domain name. And, of course, additional dot-coms are just $9.99 per year. But uh, you just use that pro promo code COMSALE. All right, use that promo code COMSALE. That gets at $9.99 for those additional ones down to $7.99. So we want to thank GoDaddy for being a sponsor here at, at Geek News Central. And, of course, um, thank you. You know, we, it's, uh, thank you for supporting the sponsors as well. It it's, it's, uh, really helps us out. So let me um, back up just a little bit here. Um, as I said, there has not been enough hours in the day. Uh, one, uh, uh, actually two days in a row, I woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning because I had to do, because with this new six-hour time change, you know, in order for me to do meetings with uh, folks on the East Coast in the morning, I got to get up at just insanely early hours. So four o'clock in the morning, uh, basically, uh, you know, you brush your teeth, comb your hair and hope you look presentable and you get into a go to meeting session and you're, you know, you're doing HD faces and it's still a little dark here. It's uh, it can be a little scary, but, you know, you're trying to smile at 430 and be have your game plan on uh, can be a bit of a challenge. But uh, tomorrow I'm going to try to actually I'm trying to like work half a day and then like take the rest of the day easy. <laughs> it's my daughter's prom. So she is, uh, actually she's uh, got a, a friend that has flew in from uh, the mainland and uh, her and her girlfriend are going to be going to the prom and, uh, and that'll be cool. So they can go and uh, and have fun. And it's a high school friend that she's known uh, ever since elementary school um, when uh, they were, when basically when uh, her, parents were stationed here in Hawaii but uh it's that age now where you know obviously the parents move around and, the, and of course the kids still stay in touch but uh so no guy date tomorrow she has a friend date so that's gonna be cool so um I told her I said have you got an have you got an eyeball on uh um all the guys going to the prom that are that don't have dates and she says nope but I'm gonna figure out who's there alone so I was like oh no uh 16 year olds uh but it is what it is, right? So, um, again, I'm headed to Indianapolis, and the vendor I'm working with in Indy, they basically demanded that I fly on Delta. I have no status. I have, I, I'm in coach. I did get uh, paid for the uh, priority boarding, so I do at least get to, you know, board early and get my bag up into a, you know, to a spot. Um, but it's, Man, it's going to be like this all the way to Atlanta and then switching and going into Indianapolis. So if any of you got any juice, <laughs> Delta, you know, I've got like 80,000 frequent flyer miles that I had with them. Actually, I had them with um, Northwest before they merged. 
And so I'm like, hey, there's some there's some seats in first class. And, you know, with United, if there's a seat and you have an upgrade, they'll upgrade you. There's really no quotas. And that's why I'm thinking, hey, no problem. I'll be able to just use some miles. They said 15,000 miles for an upgrade. So I called the, you know, the Delta line and said, hey, I got these miles. I want to upgrade. And uh, the guy says, uh, we don't have any seats. I'm like, I'm seeing 10. He says, no, 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 no. You don't understand. <laughs> I don't have any seats to upgrade with miles. I only have, you know, only a couple of seats that I can give out on each flight. And I was like, wow, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's one of the reasons why I fly United. But when you, you know, it's it, 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 I'll be I'll be the first to admit I'm a spoiled baby. When you go from having lots of status and basically you get on an airplane and they know you by name because you're always flying the same routes to getting on a plane where you're just like uh, Group Ten, uh, please board now. <laughs> and uh, so, long story short, it's going to be a rough flight to uh to indianapolis but i was scoping out on ingress all the portals and right around where i'm going to be staying there within walking distance there's close to 20 uh portals to play on ingress i cannot wait it's going to be a great time to level up some more and score some more points and uh so i will be uh playing ingress in the uh in the evenings when i'm not doing the show and other stuff while i'm uh um, in indianapolis so definitely going to be planning on having a meetup on Friday. So again, you got to send me an email, geeknews at gmail.com. And really, that's the best way to reach the show. Um, on Twitter, you can uh, you know you can tweet me at geeknews. Again, geeknews at email, geeknews at gmail.com is the email address. And also the show hotline is 619-342-7365. I want to show you guys something. Those of you that are watching, um, Probably on Saturday, we're going to be using. Um, I got a demo unit from the folks from Streamview, Streamvu, Streamvu TV, at VU TV, and uh, this is an expensive little unit. I just I'm just shocked how much this thing costs um, compared to you know really what some of the other stuff is out there. But they've got a streaming service, and they use uh, they've got a box. And let me show you this little little unit here. It's called the Streamvu TV um, producer station, and yeah, this sucker's like two thousand dollars. So it's not inexpensive, but what it does, it um, it takes an SDI in, so you just plug an SDI in, and then you hook up your LAN cable, and you're able to stream to their service, and then they have it set up where you pay a certain amount um, for the service. Now, you know I. It's it's SDI, so that's one of the reasons why it, it, it raises the price. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of competition in this space right now. Right now I'm using the, the live stream broadcaster to uh, push the video stream to, you know, to live stream. And that was like 400 bucks, but it was uh, you know, HDMI, which is a big difference in the, um, you know, the, basically what you can push into it. So, but it, ultimately my source media is SDI here, and I do an SDI to... Um, to HDMI converter. So we're going to play with this on uh, Saturday, see how this works out, uh, doing a review on the unit, um, looking at the, basically at the services. A lot of stuff is coming up for NAB. I'm starting to get emails from companies uh, sharing stuff, the big announcements for NAB. Really excited with some of the things that are coming to NAB. Um, you hear the motorcycle rider going by, driving absolutely too fast. So anyway, long story short, uh, look forward to being out at NAB uh, second week of April, um, going out to the show to see what's going on there. Um, Saturday, I believe Rob Greenlee, my co-host, has lined up a special guest from The Verge. Um, I think I saw the email today that that is a tentative guest. I, I don't have the name. I was busy, just read it real quick, but uh, we may have a special guest from The Verge on Saturday uh, on our on morning tech show. So look forward to uh, doing that. That'll kick off at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 12 noon Eastern. And uh, But anyway, I went to uh, the uh, accountant today, picked up my corporate taxes. Of course, they're due tomorrow. Uh, wrote him a check. <laughs> wrote Uncle Sam a check. Wrote the state of Hawaii a check. Folks, there's, there's just two things are guaranteed in life. <laughs> Death 
and taxes. Death and taxes are absolutely unequivocally guaranteed, and it makes me throw up in my mouth every time I have to, I look at what I have in my checkbook, and I look at what I have to write Uncle Sam, and it just makes me want to ball like a baby. (laughs) Having a small business in the state of Hawaii is tantamount to, I can't even use the words on the show because it wouldn't be child safe. (laughs) Needless to say, I pay nearly as much taxes in the state of Hawaii as I do federally. And it's just, it's criminal. I mean, it is simply criminal. And, uh, and I talk about it every year, but it just, it just shocks me. And then I paid all year quarterly too. And, uh, it doesn't matter. It just, it just sucks. It really does. Who said that, uh, you know, that we're getting tax reductions <laughs> and that, you know, I, Believe me, it sucks. All right. Long story short, let's uh, let's let's roll on into something that will obviously ha- have to help me make make some more taxes, and then we'll get into the uh, full blown content. Let me look at the regular. Yeah, get everything covered there. Of course, our, our good friends over at Dine.com have been uh, gracious enough to sponsor this show and a number of other shows um, on the network over the past uh, couple of months, and we've been talking about Dine here for a while on the show, and I think. You guys know we've got this special offer where you can get 30% off on their on their products and services. But, you know, Dine works with a lot of companies, big and small. And, uh, you know, for 13 years, you know, they've provided some of the best in class managed DNS and outsourced DNS. And they quite simply help websites stay up and online at all times. And that's really their bottom line in their products and services. Um, I've been a Dine customer for a long time. Uh, matter of fact, probably uh, if I think back to some of the stuff I was doing back in the BBS days when we were fudging the way we were getting the BBS online, I've probably been a customer of them since the very, very close to the very beginning when they uh, when they started up. So again, if you have a website and you want faster internet, you want your websites to load quicker, and you want to make sure that if your DNS provider goes down, you can have a secondary route to your website. And that's where Dine.com comes in. With outsourced DNS, you can make sure people get to your website at all times. And again, with managed DNS, you can even connect items like a webcam or DVR to a private channel that you can pull from at any time. So really, this is a, a business product. This is a small business. It's an enterprise. It is a guy that just has a small website. And really, it's important too. They are supporting IPv6. Uh, that's all dialed in over there. It's simple. Get faster internet by using Dyn for DNS. Simply visit dyn. That's dyn.com forward slash podcast thirty. Fill out the contact form, or really just start shopping right away and save thirty percent by using that promo code podcast thirty at checkout. Again, once again, again visit dyn.com forward slash podcast thirty. And, you know, one thing that you guys need to watch out for, too, is if you're looking for new audio and video gear, and one way you can support the show is you'll notice at Geek News Central, we've got a banner on the website for the folks over at B&H. If you click on that, every purchase you make over there helps the show out, and uh, we definitely appreciate your support when you do that as well. All right, let me go ahead and get into the uh, the content, and I want to show you guys something. The Samsung Galaxy 4 announcement was today, um, but... I have to hand it to Samsung. They have had as big a press day as any press day that Apple has ever had. If you look over at Tech Meme and you look at the number of articles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 primary articles, and this has actually shrunk since this, uh, since the announcements today. And then all these others, so there's, you know, there's just dozens in here. Everyone's talking about the new Samsung Galaxy S4. Uh, Everything from hands-on to what it's going to look like. And the folks over at uh, at Gizmodo obviously have have a write-up on speed right off the bat today and and sharing a, a video of what this thing looks like. It's thinner, it's lighter, and plus, they've added just a huge number of new services. And, uh... You know, the, the, the Samsung 3 
sold over 40 million units. So the question is, can the Samsung S4 line up to that kind of hype? And really, I think it can. The screen, watching the video, and I'm tonight, for those of you that are watching, I'm drinking iced tea tonight. I refrain from uh, pounding a Red Bull. I'm trying to trying to be a little more healthy, uh, and that includes show prep time. But, you know, the first thing, really, if you look at their, if you look at the article here, is that it really, it looks like the S3 a lot in some ways. And uh, the screen went from 4.8 inches on the S3 to a full 5 inches on the S4, but it actually feels smaller at 5.46 inches tall at 2.75 wide and 0.31 thick. It's slightly narrow and thinner than the S3 and just 0.08 inches taller. It's also 0.9 ounces lighter at uh, 4.6 ounces. And they really have shrunk this thing down with the bezel and everything else that's around the screen. So uh, I'm sure we're going to start seeing a lot of these when they're, re when they're released. I know a lot of people are excited about them. And, you know, when I go places, I look at what people are holding in their hands these days. And, you know, I see a huge number of S3s. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of these S4s as they hit the market. And every, just about every provider is going to have one. So uh, don't, uh, don't sweat it. It'll be available in mass. And uh, screen's pretty beautiful. One thing that is kind of cool there that you've, they've made available is on the 13 megapixel camera, It'll take a camera forward and aft at the very same time. And there's just a whole bunch of cool features now. And I'm not going to go into all of them because it's just uh, a whole bunch of stuff that they've added in to the Android interface and making it work better. And uh, so, you know, there's all kinds of cool accessories that they've announced as well. But, uh, you know, there's been a lot of hype built up off this device. And, uh, you know, so what they've done really with the S4 and, uh, you know, they've, they've stayed safe and they've gave you a lot more house horsepower under the hood. They've got eight cores on this bad boy. Four of them, they're on one chip and four on the other. Four of them are real, like super high performance and they'll use a little more power and the other four are a little lower in power. So they kind of had a um, decision to make when it's basically the, the phone smart enough to know when to use the uh, the processor to use a little more power. So that's kind of a way they've done a little bit of load balancing when it comes to the juice on this thing. So we'll see where this leads. But uh, um, again, the 8-core Galaxy S4 available in Q2. All right, moving on here. And you guys are probably waiting for me to explode, but I'm going to save my ranting here for just a few minutes because I think you know what's coming. But Redbox has announced their instant launch video streaming to the public. And they made good promise uh, to open the uh, doors to the general public. And the new service, again, is a joint venture between Verizon and Redbox. And uh, this was announced in February of 2012. Redbox Instant will give new users unlimited streaming and four DVD credits for free for one month. Um, once the month-long trial ends, the service will cost $8 a month. So uh, it's been in beta for a while. So this service is undercutting uh, Netflix monthly rates uh, by charging just $6 a month for unlimited streaming, $2 less than Netflix. Uh, but if users want the four DVD plans, it, it's going to cost them $8. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that was one thing was my wife was asking. She said, so I'd still get some free videos? I said, I don't know. And it, reading it, I said tonight, hey, $8, you get four videos plus you're gonna and I, what i want to see is the the lineup how many movies they have how it compares or compares to netflix so um be worth just the run on it for a little while just to give it uh you know some time to see how it's going to be so we'll definitely be signing up um signing up here in a criminal action a reuters social media editor has been uh, charged in the united states with conspiring with Hacker Group Anonymous to break into uh, a website of the former person's employer, uh, which was the Tribune Company. The, the indictment says that Matthew Keyes gave a member of Anonymous a login and password to the company server. At least one hacker managed to change a web version of the Los Angeles Times news feature in the indictment. So uh, basically... Uh, 
He's uh, facing uh, some serious charges. He's been charged with one count each of conspiracy transmit information to damage a protected computer, transmitting information to damage a protected computer, and attempted to transmission of information to damage a per that's all says the same doggone thing. One count each of conspiracy to transmit information to damage a protected computer. Oh, that's funny. All right. It's like they they wrote it up in the, the indictments like they copy and paste it three times. So anyway, this guy uh had worked for Sacramento based TV station KTXL, um, owned by the Tribune and uh, as its web producer, but his job was ter terminated in October 2010. So, uh, anyway, doesn't pay to share credentials that uh, could only have come from you. All right, in a move that is bound to upset a lot of people using Chrome, Google has banned ad blocking apps from the Play Store. So basically, what's going to happen now, sideloading is your only option. Google is cleaning shop, and to me, this feels like it's very anti-competitive. I don't agree what they've done with this, but they announced yesterday that it's killing off its reader service, which we're going to talk about next. But at the same time, that uh, they their developer distribution agreement Basically, because it states that developers must not create an app that interferes, disrupts, damages, or accesses, uh, or accesses in an authorized manner the devices, servers, networks, or other properties. So that's the way they're giving the excuse that if you're blocking advertisement, this violates that section of the agreement. Um, this isn't the Google's first move to disrupt ad blocking. So uh, again, you're going to have to sideload this stuff now, but not... Uh, from the website. Um, so using uh, third-party proxy services, uh, which are both viable options for blocking ads on Android, but they aren't for novices or really are for casual users. And uh, Google's never going to be able to kill all ad blocking, but removing apps like Adblock Plus, Ad Free, and Google from Google Play has really uh, made an impact. And how many are going to vote by using a, a different browser because that they have done this? Okay, so let me switch gears here and talk about, um, actually, let me take this to the end. I know you guys are waiting for me to get wound up. Uh, not quite ready to yet, am I? Ah, let me talk about SimCity first. <laughs> Hackers have opened up on offline play. They've released some modding tools for SimCity, and this thing is pretty incredible, what they've been able to do. And put the game in developer mode and just like the rules that uh, EA has made for the game, <laughs> you can just do whatever you want. Um, this package of files that let players edit many elements um, of the UI underlying game logic. The tools aren't incredibly user friendly for the time being, but those with some JavaScript experience and patience. Uh, can do things like disable the online connectivity requirement, fix the fudge population display, and even affect how the basic uh, simulation works in some ways. So uh, hackers are pouring through the code to see what kind of new features and gameplay can be unlocked. So it, it'd be fun to watch this. But uh, uh, the revenge of the user, they are going to get what they want one way or the other. It, it'll be about time that these game companies um, start listening to the listeners instead of doing stupid things like they've done with uh, with the Sim City launch. All right, this judge that's dealing with the Prenda lawyers, the court is saying they're going to sanction Prenda lawyers if they don't appear on March 29th. Uh, this judge, Otis Wright, is downright angry, and he's ordered the principals of the porn trolling firm Prenda Law to come to his courtroom and justify their conduct so... Basically, you know, they had made these lame excuses and skipped the hearing. So now the judge has issued an order that even what's really more ominous than the previous, he's basically ordered them to report to his court on March 29th to answer for a long list of alleged misconduct in addition to the cha charges raised in Monday's hearing. Judge Wright now wants Prenda to explain why they should not be sanctioned for defrauding the court about the relationships between among Prenda's various shell companies. Um, this is going to just, this is going to be 
more entertainment uh, on this print of law stuff. And, you know, ultimately, I think some people are going to go to jail. We'll see where this goes. Uh, one thing's for sure, they're not going to have much money left. All right, the Higgs boson. They think they found it. They think they, uh, they're they pretty uh, pleased with the results. It meets all their modeling. They're still, you know, even though they're saying it, think they found it. Um, basically, the teams between two general purpose detectors of the Large Hadron Collider, Atlas and CMS, tend to go through the results when facing a deadline. And basically, they, uh, they basically at a conference in Italy, uh, they basically announced a bunch of stuff. But uh, they are, they've been very careful. And people are saying everything is showing like it is what it, they think it is. And um, so they're going to, you know, the information's out there. The scientists are going to be digging around. And, of course, the Higgs boson is better known as the God particle. But uh, it's really pretty complicated stuff. But uh, they've defined it with the quarks, the leptons, and the forces. And uh, Higgs boson is uh, pretty well defined. And there's all kinds of videos that are showing graphs that I have no clue what they mean. But uh, anyway, the science community is pretty doggone excited about this. And we'll see, uh, see where this leads when they uh, get out of the repair or upgrade of the Large Hadron Collider and start pushing more power here. Hey, you know, have any of you uh, ever worked at a place where you need to swipe your, your finger to uh, log in to a computer or uh, unlock a hard drive or any place where you've had to swipe for security? Well, a Brazilian doctor has faced charges of fraud after being caught on camera using a silicone, yes, a silicone finger to sign in and work for absent colleagues. Um, this 29-year-old resist, resist, arrested, <laughs> resisted, arrested on Sunday for using a prosthetic finger to fool the biometric employee attendance device used at the hospital where she works near Sao Paulo. Uh... I guess this is a big deal. I guess this happens a lot in Brazil. Uh, people never show up to work, but yet they get paid. And I don't know how that works. You know, you would think that you would uh, have some supervisors and management that would be watching this. But I guess these government workers do pretty much as they please. And they're, they're, they're known as an army of ghosts. And uh, boy, oh boy, that's uh, pretty uh, impressive. You uh, go to, don't have to go to work, but yet you get paid. But at least in this case... Uh, this gal got arrested, and probably those six other people will be fired or whatever happens to uh, government employees that try to defraud the government in Brazil. Um, let's uh, go here. I'm moving some topics around. And let me show you guys a graph to get this, get this party started tonight. And th this is a graph that was posted over on BuzzFeed. And what I'm showing, for those of you that are listening, what I'm showing you is a circle graph that um, basically shows the traffic that comes from Google Reader versus the traffic that comes from Google+. And if I was to give an estimation of the actual total traffic that Google Reader, as compared to Google+, drives to this specific site, it's probably about 98% Google Reader, 2% Google+. Well, yesterday, much to my dismay, and I'll be honest, when I heard the announcement, uh, the 24-plus-year uh, sailor in me, of course, a retired sailor, um, I had a bout of a, a relapse, and I probably cussed like a sailor for, for 20 minutes. I was, I'm not at all pleased. And Google is, you know, very good at destroying ecosystems. And, uh, you know, Google has now shut down a service that I care deeply about. Uh, Google Reader will die a graceless, undig undignified death on July 1st, 2013. And let me talk about the process I use for this show. And it's, I've been using it for at least... Probably five years is I've got all these RSS feeds, probably a thousand of them. And 
I go through the reader and I find the articles for the show and it's very quick. It's handy. I, I scan the site, bump, bump, bump. I hit the, the middle button on my mouse and it loads it across a tab um, on the computer. And then you know, I probably have 40 tabs loaded. I go through and I find the ones I want to keep and discard and I reshuffle them and sort them and I'm good. And I can get the show ready in about 60 to 90 minutes. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I have today, after I have calmed down a little bit, I have went and investigated several things. And Feedly is looking like the site that I'm probably going to end up on. But right now, they're synchronized to um, to Reader. So they're working on a project they're calling Normandy where they are going to disconnect. They have no choice. They're disconnecting from Google, and they will basically provide what they're providing now, uh, standalone. You know, the RSS reader space um, in January 2006 was pretty competitive. There were dozens of different choices for readers. And Google Reader made its first public appearance a couple of months before in, in October 2005. And, you know, RSS seemed to be, you know, and it's still, you know, to me, RSS is the lifeblood of this show. Without RSS, you know, this audience would not be able to download in the way we do it now, download the show and get it on their mobile device. And listen, now a huge number of you still download the show and put it on your device and, and, Take me in your treadmill, take me to Antarctica, uh, drive with me in the car. There's just a, a no, numerous number of ways you guys listen to the show having downloaded it. Now, many of you come to the website and just click play or you 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 basically kind of stream it live from your phone. You just put play and it progressively downloads and you listen to it. Um, Google has destroyed the RSS feed reader. And they, after they stifled this competition, they killed innovation and, and, you know, and really they introduced it and then they neglected it for years. Same thing as FeedBurner. And don't even, you know, we already talked about FeedBurner. FeedBurner is next. If you're a podcaster, you better make plans right now to get your butts off FeedBurner and get your feed back in your control. Because it's next. It's got to be. They're killing everything RSS. And, you know, Dave Weiner, you know, he basically said, you know, last night we said goodbye to Google Reader, and that got his site a lot of traffic and a fair amount of hate from people who love Google Reader, which I'm one of. He says, I wanted to say that it's not possible to use RSS without being dependent on Google Reader. And and since Google Reader is going away, uh, we'll maybe see some implementation some by some other companies, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um we'll see how people are, how we get the media from other companies. Um, but RSS, as a consumer of podcasts, you should be highly concerned. You need to continue to tell the sites that you visit, please continue to support RSS. Now, a Jen, one of our writers here at Geek New Central, you know, she's basically going to go to Feed uh, Wizard. It's RSS without Google Reader. And um, uh, Feed Wizard is an app that she found on iTunes. It's made by a company called Wondercop, and it does not connect with or require Google Reader in order to function. It's 99 cents, but it's going to be on a device. For me, I need something for the desktop. And when I basically posted my, my post last night on this, you know, my, I was pretty graphic um, and flipped uh, Google the bird uh, with a little graphic on my page. And... Um, you know, I can be honest with you. I feel like my dogs died on this thing. And, you know, those of you that don't use Google reader or didn't use it, you know, for me, a lot of, it was the source of getting news, not only for the show, but for the website. And, um, you know, without RSS, this would not be possible with what we have done and where we've come and the things that we've done. It would change. It would change dramatically. Um, some are saying switch to Flipboard, but you know, Flipboard is a you know 
it's an it's an iPad app. It's cool for if you want to just browse the news, but I'm curating the news. I'm I'm building it into you know segments of stuff that I can find and review, and it's a river of information. Um, you know, again for the Google brass that killed that killed Google Reader, you need to look at the picture on my website because that's my message to you. Um, I'm just. I'm not at all happy. And what what can you do, right? You can't do nothing. Um, and if you guys don't rely on readers, if you get your news from Twitter and Facebook and, and Google+, Plus, cool, I'm more power to you. But I don't have time to sit and stare at Twitter all day. And even though I build lists, this stuff just like two flows and it's off and it's gone. And that's not how I can build, you know, this show and give you the information that I need for it. You know, I used to use Speed Demon and Nick Bradbury over at, uh, you know, Nick was um, the originator, put his blood, sweat, and tears into Feed Demon. That's the first thing I did. I went and downloaded it. And I, I, nothing against Nick, but I said, this is not what I need. You know, this is, I've changed, I have progressed, I have migrated to a new way of doing my show. Feed Demon for many years was the product that I used. And he said, hey, this is just a hard post for me to write. I've used Feed Demon every day since I created it back in 2003. It's part of my daily workflow. The first thing I turn to after pouring myself a coffee in the morning. I've thoroughly enjoyed working on it. But it's time for Feed Demon to die. He's and Basically, he's got it linked to Google Reader. So he's syncing it between Google Reader and the application. Now, there's a way you can turn that off. And that's what I did. I immediately turned it off. And I, at least I have my feeds downloaded. I've got everything backed up. At least I was able to get that stuff off of Google. So if you're looking for a new reader, there's five iOS news app alternatives to Google Reader that's available. Zite is one. Flood, Circa, Flipboard, and Pulse. And, uh, of course, the one that was uh, written up by Geek News Central. So Dig is saying they're going to build a Google Reader replacement with the same API and new features. Uh, okay. Uh, Feedly's got one already. And I uh, tweeted Feedly today, and I said, um, where do I send my check and my, or my Visa card? How do we get you guys to the point where you can support and and run this program and get me what I need to do to curate and and uh, and move the news? But you think about just think about this a little deeper here, folks. So Google kills reader. It is the default standard right now. No one else has really built anything but a few small systems. Feedly being one of them. They kill that, okay? So they're trying to wean you off RSS feeds. For a lot of people, they say, the heck with it. I'm not going to find another app. They'll go to Twitter. They'll go to Facebook. They'll go to Google+. They won't load another feed reader, all right? So they weeded you off as a user. Then six months from now, they say, well, no one's using RSS anymore. Of course, because they kill reader. So since no one's using RSS anymore, let's go ahead and kill FeedBurner. And millions of idiots have used FeedBurner. And I, I, hey, you guys been listening to this show from 2004, 2005? This is nothing new. I've been saying for a long time. And we did a whole rant on this a week ago. You know, a lot of people have used FeedBurner. And so FeedBurner says, oh, we're going to shut down. Well, Okay, they're going to shut it down. Are they going to do any redirects? I doubt it. They're trying to kill RSS. Google's never been a fan of RSS. So what happens, and all these people that are subscribed to Reader are gone. Number two, they kill FeedBurner. And guess what? Up, oh, these feeds go dead, and people have no way of regaining. They lose all this audience that is subscribed via FeedBurner via a different reader. So my prediction, FeedBurner's gone before the end of the year. I might be wrong, and if, and if I'm wrong, great. But if I had any feeds on FeedBurner, 
I would, uh, matter of fact, I told the team, my team at Raw Voice, let's write a step-by-step tutorial. Let's make it very straightforward. Tell people what's going to happen when they move. We weren't recommending people move prior to yesterday. As of today, we're telling people, get the heck off FeedBurner now. Don't go to another service. Don't be too stupid to do that. Control your feed on your own .com. There's no reason why to not run on your .com. You don't have to rely on anybody. No one's got their hand in your pocket, you know, or or hand on your belt strap, holding your pants up and just saying, oh, we're not going to do it no more and let go. So uh, we'll see. I hope I'm wrong. But uh, I was pissed. I'm still pissed. And is it going to change anything? Probably not. And I agree with someone in the uh, chat room. Um, They're saying uh, social media is not a replacement for RSS. I agree completely. Um, You guys are getting busy in the chat room tonight. Spitball, Sly Fox, Jiggy Jaguar, welcome, guys. Darth Gator, hey, welcome to the show. Um, You know, so what are we going to do? Well, we hope that Feedly and we hope that Dig and all these guys come up with, and maybe this is what the space needs. Maybe we'll get enough groundswell going with these companies putting something together. Matter of fact, I said to Angelo, can we build one? (laughs) And, you know, he just like, you know, there was dead silence on the other side of the phone. And that answer was pretty evident. No, (laughs) we're not building one. Um. I ought to build one because I know what I want. I know what I need. <laughs> That's why we built PowerPress. That's why we built our, our generator package. That's why we do everything. It's what, you know, the team is all content creators. We know what we need, and we build tools that we know other content creators are going to need. And, uh, you know, focus on the content. You know, we really want you know, the tools or the tools. You know, we want everything else to get all the way and focus on the content. So you guys are probably sick of me talking about this, but it is an integral part of the way this show is put together. And it's what I use tonight. But so what I'm going to have to do, <laughs> you got to teach an old dog new tricks, right? So probably starting next week, I'll probably be using Feedly because I got to make the move. I just might as well go ahead and start. Um, but, you know, oftentimes... I go to pick my kids up at school, and it's, okay, so it's a show night. That's what happened today. I went to pick the kids up at school. And by the way, my wife sold her car, the car that uh, we needed to get rid of. Um, we basically put it, made a great price on it on Craigslist and sold it within 24 hours. So we're officially down to one vehicle, so I told her, you got to find a car. We can't have just one vehicle in this family. But I was driving to pick the kids um, up from school. They start spring break tomorrow, and... Um, Got to the school. My wife does uh, volunteer work, and she sometimes works uh, in the mornings at the school. So she was there. She says, I'll drive on the way home. So what do I do on the way home? I've got uh, my iPad opened up, and I've got reader loaded, and I'm going through the articles, and I'm starring the ones that I want to talk about tonight. So by the time we got back to the house, which was 45 minutes later, the, uh, the show was all starred and ready to be loaded here in the studio. I came in here and I just click, 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 click. It loaded all the tabs up. I went through. So record time, I had the show ready tonight because I did the show prep actually in the car on the way home. I loaded the Feedly app. It's just too slow. It it did what I wanted to do. But, you know, I tried to maximize my my production time. And um, that's one of the ways I do it on show nights. And my wife will drive bringing the kids back. Um... Or if I haven't went, I just, you know, I do it normal here. But so next week, uh, being in Indianapolis, I'm going to have to do uh, uh, do this. Actually, I'm going to be down in Bloomington for most of the week and then back up in Indiana, Indiana on Friday. So let's go ahead and, and and move on here to a new topic and switch gears. But love to hear your comments. Geeknews at gmail.com. Twitter at Geek News is a place I want to hear from you. And, uh, of course, the hotline is available, 619-342-7365. Are you going to miss Reader? Or do you care less? <laughs> hey, announcements today by the folks at Apple. Uh, OS 10 Mountain Lion Update 10.8.3. 
is available for you to go out there and get. You probably have gotten the announcement already in your apps, so make sure you get that downloaded. It's uh, 800 megs, so you may want to start it before you go to bed if you don't have a super fast uh, internet connection. But uh, it's basically, it, it does a few things, but it brings boot camp support for installing Windows 8, which is which is big. This is long overdue. And uh, boot camp supports for Macs with at least a three terabyte hard drive. So that's uh, a limitation of it. Um, kind of surprising that they made that uh, actually one of the uh, features. There's a good article over on the register talking about new nuke technology. Uh, a new nuke could power rolled until 2083. A company spinoff from MIT is claiming has cracked the holy grail of nuclear technology. It's a reactor design that runs on materials that the nuclear power industry currently discards as waste and which could meet all of the world's demands for the next 70 years. It's also walk away safe. Designers claim make it immune to the kind of meltdown that destroyed the Fukushima reactors. This is called the Waste Annihilating Molten Salt Reactor. Wamser is based on designs first dreamt up in the 1950s for reactors that use liquid rather than solid fuels. So two graduate students at MIT have now upgraded those designs so the reactors can be fueled by nuclear waste. And, also, and I, I've always wondered if that would be possible and also designed a safety system that will automatically shut the reactor down without power or human intervention. So pretty interesting. They got a great talk about this and, and they can build you one to go. $1.5 billion. It's capable of um, creating 500 megawatt MWEs and uh, that's a pretty big uh, power plant. It can, you know, you consider a standard nuclear power plant. Did Chrome just crash on me? Maybe it did. Um, a standard nuclear power plant is, uh, um, I think, 1.5 megawatts. Um, like 1,500 megawatts, whereas this one's uh, 500. What happened here? Did uh, something happen? What? What's going on with the uh, with Chrome here? Oh, this is not good. What did what did I do? I think I killed it. Oh, this is gonna suck big time. I've got a spinning a spinning wheel. <laughs> I did something here. Come on, baby. Oh, you're gonna do that to me. Oh, this is gonna turn out to be fun. I can't even see the. Uh, it, it like it expanded. I can't even see the. Uh, the X button anymore. So, it, you know, it, Chrome is uh, lately, and I may have to go back to using Firefox, um, Chrome has been having problems with uh, with Flash. And um, it uh, every once in a while, a Flash, see, I'm going to have to control alt delete. I can't, uh, did it kill my home machine? No. All right, I can see you. Wow, what is going on? This thing is like, uh, yeah, I didn't like whatever whatever's happening here. It did not, uh, good old control alt delete isn't even working. So I wonder if the machine is, is done. Oh, this is not good. Let's see, what can I do? Let's try closing that. Yeah, well, maybe maybe we're going to have a show wrap here. <laughs> Where are we at? We're at 54 minutes. Yeah, something is something has went haywire because uh you know, that is that's just one thing. That is one uh uh you are reliant upon your computers. I've never quite had I've never had quite this happen. Oh, what? Okay, finally something some Oh yeah, there we go. Something released. Oh, it's back now. Well, that was bizarre. Okay, so let's let's cross our fingers here. Whatever it was, uh, okay, we, we're <laughs> we're on. We can continue. Something was uh, causing trouble. It's all like all of a sudden the process let go and everything blinked three four times and the browser's back. All right. Um. So let's let's switch topics. 
Uh, of course, we were just uh, wrapping up on this uh, nuclear power plant. But anyway, $1.5 billion can get you one. They think China's going to order some. So we'll see. I think we need a little nuclear power here in, in, in Honolulu uh, to help us uh, lower our, uh, our, our cost. I'm tired of paying 36 cents a kilowatt. All right, Foxtel's crying wolf at the threat of faster broadband. Foxtel Australia boss Richard Frodenstein has picked up the IPFI megaphone and asked Australian federal government to protect his business model from the rampant piracy that will doubtless emerge from the rollout of the national broadband network. Yeah, they're getting faster speed down in Australia. You know, finally the users are going to be able to get some uh, internet that's usable something that moves a little quicker with this national broadband network, but yet the record companies are already crying foul, and we haven't even, they haven't even got it yet. Um, same old story. Switching gears, CBS is bringing full episode streaming in the HD to iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch. So welcome to 21st Century there, CBS. So following the footsteps of NBC, TBS, TNT, ABC, and a small number of others, CBS has launched a new iOS app that enables the iPhone, iPod, iTouch, and iPad owners to stream full-length HD quality episodes of CBS programming. So um, I wonder if you have... Oh, there's no mention of cost. I don't think you have to validate that you are a subscriber seeing that CBS is one of those companies that still actually transmits something. So uh, anyway, I, of course, I don't watch CSI. I don't watch Hawaii Five-0, although those of you that want to see Paradise, you should. I don't watch NCIS because I know all the stuff on that show is baloney. NCIS really doesn't work that way. Um, but anyway, they've got a few TV shows, I guess, they are still worth watching. So anyway, but they're on an iOS and uh, where's the, I, the Android app? That's the question that needs to be asked. There's a, a, an interesting article over in Tech Dirt, and the title of it is "Why Should New Legislative Data Flow Directly into Wikipedia?" Um, apparently, there's a, an event going on at uh, Cato Institute with a very practical focus, looking at ways to automate the process of getting legislative data into Wikipedia. That is, when new bills are introduced and they make their way through Congress when the, and to the president. Why isn't there a reason why that data can't automatically be? populated into Wikipedia or being available to the public. We've been told all of a sudden we're going to have all this transparency, right? XML, RSS could be able to pull that data in. So um, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, interesting discussion going on over at uh, the Cato Institute talking about why we can't get into Wikipedia. All right, I've got some servers uh, obviously running on GoDaddy. I, I usually let them run for two or three months before I reboot them. But there was a Solaris machine that was shut down today after 3,737 days of uptimes. Of uptime, the Sun 280R was running Solaris 9. And uh, at the time of the making of the video, it was idle. The last server it had, re had was removed sometime last year. And a tribute video was made. Um, basically, they had to move data centers, but uh, been up. 3,737 days. You're not going to get that type of time out of a Windows machine. So just uh, probably a little over 10 years, yeah? U.S. Cyber Command discloses offensive cyber war capabilities. Earlier this week, the newly minted head of United Cyber Command team and NSA head General Keith Alexandra told assembled lawmakers the U.S. has created an offensive cyber warfare division to do far more than protect U.S. assets from foreign attacks. So this is really kind of the first time there's been someone actually say we've got this offensive uh, capability. Now, to keep up with the times, the folks over at Facebook, according to the Wall Street Journal, are going to be incorporating hashtags. So Facebook is working on incorporating hashtags on Twitter's most iconic markers into its service by using the symbol as a way to group conversations. Whoa, isn't that original? Isn't that an original idea? You know, come on now. You know, they... Are, is, are they slipping over there? Is that what's going on? Are they slipping at uh, Facebook? Are they seeing less people use it? They have to make some changes? Um, I don't know. Makes sense that they should have done it. All right, news from Mars. And actually, let me load this up. Uh, NASA is saying that Curiosity has confirmed 
that life could have survived on Mars. So just 200 days into the primary mission, NASA's Curiosity rover has confirmed Mars could once support a life. Now, what they found in a drill, they did a drilling, uh, uh, basically they went and drilled a rock. Um, and what they found, and here's the what, they, what was in the sample, um, carbon dioxide, oxygen, water, forms of sulfur, and some um, some sulfates, I think. So they're saying, hey, that looks like a riverbed and uh, uh, forms of sulfur. So they're, uh, they're pretty excited about this. And they said that uh, at one time the, where the uh, Curiosity is sitting right now, there was probably a river of water flowing through there. So very cool stuff coming uh, from the Curiosity rover in Mars. And uh, they're actually doing pretty good on getting the rover back to full science, too. All right, the White House has to respond to an anti-CISPA petition, the Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, the latest attempt by the U.S. legislative branch to hinder online freedom, just received a significant blow from concerned citizens on the official White House petition site. The petition has reached 100,000 signatures. So this is the minimum required. We'll see what the White House has to say about this one. All right, um, those of you in the UK, uh, give yourself a round of applause. The average UK broadband speeds have do hit double figures. So in November 2008, your average speed was 3.6 megs per second. And November 2012, you finally crossed over the 12 meg uh, mark. So uh, it's still slow as compared to uh, what many people here in the United States um, um, have to are, are, are able to get. And of course, uh, I can still consider even the United States slower than molasses uh, as compared to many other countries uh, of the world. So congratulations for getting over uh, 12 uh, megabits per second. But one of the coolest things I've seen here is an article that was over on Bloomberg Business Week technology section. This in innovator, Martin Ridford, has come up with a gravity-powered lamp. And why someone hasn't built one of these before, I don't know. Maybe they have. But what this is, is just for five bucks, he's designed a pineapple-sized lamp powered by a one-pound weight that falls about six feet in a half hour. Now, that may not sound like much, but it's enough to drive a, a silent motor at 1,000 rotations per second. And that's enough to shine a, uh, a light uh, brighter than most kerosene lamps. And it requires a certain amount of elbow grease. Yeah, you just kind of pull the, the, you know, basically the weight back up and reset it, and it's good to go. This guy's made a, a variety of different stuff in the, in the past, but they're going to be sending these uh, for beta testing, essentially, um, to um, Africa and a variety of other uh, countries that um, have issues. Um, they're going to have tests in uh, Latin America, Middle East, and uh, so this is going to be pretty cool. But the basic model is going to retail for about five bucks. And uh, so pretty exciting stuff here, uh, what, what they're doing. It, it makes sense to me, right? Um, they've had those hand crank units for years. Um, but this one here is one that you can hang up in a tent and uh, a pretty cool way to, to get light. As long as you're strong enough to, uh, to reset one pound, I think you will, uh, you'll be okay. All right, so let's go ahead here and um, look at email. Some of you that uh, tried to get on the Roku contest, you were too late. We did get a, an email from our winner, so let me see if I can uh, find that. Um, we got an email from Dino. Say, hey, Todd, this is Dino. I'm totally stoked to hear her won the Roku, and so is my girlfriend. In fact, she was in the car when you mentioned it in the last show. Ironically, on the show, you talked about how 5% have cut the cord with TV and 5% includes me. No more direct TV for me. I'm a Netflix internet these days, so the Roku box will go into heavy use. Very cool. And he passes his information. He's out of Manville, Texas. So uh, Dino, oh, it's, it's, it's pronounced D-Now. <laughs> exactly like the uh, Flintstones dog. So, okay, so very cool. Um, so congratulations, Dino. All right, so got an email here from Jeff. He says, uh, hey, Ted, Todd, the impending demise of Google Reader has major implications for app development community. Google RSS services has become the de facto standard for third-party clients, and users and developers alike will need to find an alternative 
popular news aggregation app Feedly thinks it has a solution. Of course, we talked about that already early in the show. I want to thank Robert Simpson for giving me the heads up about not seeing GNC 842 in the audio feed. So thanks for giving me the uh, smack side of the head there, uh, Robert, to um, to go and look. And basically, I just had copied the enclosure into the wrong window. Um, got an email from Stacy. Stacy, I missed the, the cutoff on uh, winning the Roku, but uh, I wanted to say what she said. She said, I want to tell you that I love how you relay all the latest tech news in an easy, understand, relaxed manner that a busy student like myself can enjoy. Geek News Central is one of my favorite podcasts, and I look forward uh, to it every week. Also, uh, I also like how you keep your listeners updated on your life. It definitely contributes to the Ohana vibe of the show. Keep up the great work, Stacy. Thanks, Stacy, for the email. And I got an email here from uh, Billy. He says, hey, Todd. While I have no doubt that China has hackers, both government-sponsored and independents, it's extremely unlikely that any hacking attack that has its source in China originated from China. I, Billy, I would disagree. If, if, if I was going to be on a hacking spree, the first thing I would do would be build a botnet. To do this, I would take advantage of the numerous vulnerabilities existing in unpatched Windows machines. The biggest source of unpatched Windows is pirated versions of Windows. The majority of those are in China and other poor countries. When starting the hacking attack, I'd be doing it from a compromised computer in my botnet using multiple levels of proxies to hide the real source. These computers would be in countries other than Canada. One exception not to having my country as a source of the attack would be I would be doing a distributed attack in which the countries would be distributed evenly by normal of internet users and attempt to hide the origin uh, country of attack. Granted, if I had enough computers in my botnet in an evil country, I'd exclusively use that country as a source of my attacks. While I suppose it's possible that Chinese hacks are completely and utterly incompetent, this is doubtful. Therefore, the real source of the hacks is probably unknown. I think it comes from a lot of places, but I really think, based on some of these documentaries that's been done on the Internet recently, it really sounds to me like uh, the Chinese have a very organized effort. Um, if they come to, you know, we, we're at CES. There's teams of Chinese that come around with cameras, and they attack a booth. And booth owners see them come in. They try to cover up and hide some of their innovative stuff. They come in and they take the, an item and they turn it every which way, upside down, backwards, every possible imaginable angle to take an image. Sometimes they break out tape measures. You name it, go through the menu systems. What are they doing? They're reverse engineering all this stuff. And you see it later come up as available as a you know another company. So... I don't know if I 100% agree, Billy. I think tax are coming from everywhere, but I think China is a big, big source um, of those. Okay, so let's see here. I think that's all I had. Oh, I got an email from... Do, 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 do. I think this is the last one that came in um, that missed the, the cutoff. It's, it was from Tim. He said, not sure if this is too late to enter. Yep, sorry. Anyhow, I've been listening to the show since 2006 while serving the Marines. So the show has made my field day, barracks room cleaning, less boring, and Iraq, less jury. I'm going to tell you, the barracks room cleaning sucks, yeah, Tim? I take this podcast on road trips, vacations, and these days I take it on my 200-mile average workday as I, as I do courier work around Southern California Comp to Compton and Beverly Hills. I'm just a big tech and geek, but this is the only show I've ever subscribed to since I got the Zoom. Remember those from the Camp Fuji PX just outside Tokyo. I can tell you some stories about partying uh, on that base. Um, I always like how your show is on a more personal level. While some podcasts are formed on down to business, often making me feel like I was in a business meeting or seminar, your shows make me feel like I'm sitting in your living room as you discuss the latest happenings with you and your family. The fat first 15 minutes of the show, while not tech, is crucial in my opinion and signature of your show. No one else can copy. I've always pride myself in knowing that I know the latest and greatest tech news when I listen to the podcast. This show has even inspired me to join another podcast team that focuses on Disneyland-related news, and I'm having a crew amount of fun time helping to host them. Keep up the excellent work. You're a celebrity in the new media space for a reason, Tim. Hey, Tim, thanks so much. That was uh, very nice. I do appreciate your uh, comments on this. Hey, that's going to wrap it up with us here, folks. We're not bad on time tonight. Get you out of here a little early. Thanks for being with me. We'll be Saturday Morning Tech. I think we're going to have a guest from The Verge on 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern. 
make sure that uh, if, you, if you have a few moments that you go and, and, and take care of our sponsors, uh, visit dine.com, use that promo code podcast 30. If, if you find a product over there that fits your business and also we thank our good friends over at godaddy.com, our 35% off code two ninety nine dot coms and the a dollar per month hosting count. You can not beat that. It's almost good enough deal just to buy and have an extra hosting account um, on standby if you uh, pick up a domain during the year for 12 bucks who cares right and if you don't want to do that become a geek new central insider there's a link on top of the web page or an insider link on the side of the page come over and, and help two bucks a show or i think it was like uh, something ridiculous like six cents a day or something like that so give us a give us a uh, a donation to the show help us build that insider uh, base so that uh, we basically can, can grow it big enough to the point where we can say adios to a sponsor and uh, keep the tech content even more tight. But uh, uh, until we get to that point, can't do it, folks. Got to keep the lights on, and uh, that's the main thing. So consider becoming an insider here at Geek News Central. It's only six cents a day. Come on, let's let's uh, knock yourself out. All right, that's it. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. See you on Saturday. Should be fun. And, of course, next week from uh, Bloomington and Indianapolis. Everyone take care. We'll see you next time. Aloha.